Now it's time for another Dice Tower Review with me, Robert Geislinger. So here we're taking a look at Witches of the Revolution. This is a cooperative deck building game where players are going to be working together, completing events, and eventually taking care of four primary objectives. Each player starts out with a deck of cards that all are filled with Seeker Witch cards. On a player's turn, they're going to do a few things. First, you're going to add a recruit to this line. Now, if the line is already filled, other than in the first turn of the game, the one here would slide over and the others would come in in order for a new card to fill it unless you pull one of these blessings card. If a blessing card is filled then you're going to do one of the two things on the card and leave the line as it is. The blessing cards will either allow a person to recruit a face up dedicant or celebrant which are a type of witch card for free or you do not add an event this turn there's another one this is for summer there's another one here where winter will allow you to take an objective or another player could draw a card things like that regardless after the recruit the add a recruit phase happens then you're going to add an event unless a blessing stopped it adding an event is the same as it will fill in the first spot sliding over anything that may need to slide over in order to fill that spot some of the event cards will also have something that will happen when they are flipped such as this reign of frogs here when flipped the current player must discard their hand and draw four new cards which could potentially as we'll see later be a problem after an event is added to the the deck and anything resolved here which we'll explain here in a few minutes then a player is going to either act and recruit or act or recruit to recruit you're simply going to pay the cost of a recruit here now on your cards they will have these little star symbols those can be used as a currency you're going to look on these and they're going to have stars as well that is how much it costs to purchase them there may be things that are reducing them, such as here, reduce the cost by one star if any magic icon matches. So if I were to pay for that with any cards that had the same symbol, then I would reduce the cost by one. This one will reduce the cost by one automatically, unless the Liberty track has moved into these spots. If it's here, then no effects will reduce the cost. Here, you'll actually increase the cost by one, and if it gets here, you actually can't recruit at all. All. Once you recruit a card, so let's say I decided to spend these two cards here, which have a two, and I decided to take this one. It goes to the top of your draw pile. The two cards that I use to pay are actually lost forever. If you use them to buy things, you get rid of them, so they are removed from the game. In order to complete an event, you need to match symbols on the card. Now, it's not both, it's either or. So for this Reign of Frogs, we either need to have two of this green pot or three of the yellow star. Now that can be changed via, via the moon track. As the moon track moves up, it eventually goes to a plus one, then a plus two, later a three and a four. That will add one or two or three or four to the requirements of the event. But let's say we're still here and we want to do this. We can decide that we're going to act with this card here. We could play any number, but we choose to do one. Now this is where the cool thing comes in the cooperation. Any other player at the table can add a card to it for one of the symbols on the cards. So this player over here could choose to add this card, which has a pot symbol as well. Now, we have completed the two pots here, so this event is done. That will be discarded, but first we're going to resolve it. If there was any specific text we had to resolve on resolution, we would do so. Then we're going to get to take an objective token that matches one of the two symbols on the here. So in this case, we decide to take this green pot. If the card had this Liberty Bell symbol on it, we would also raise the Liberty track by one. These cards that were used are put into the discard pile of the players who use them. At this point, the player now has the option if they wish to discard cards from their hand. Now, you're primarily not going to want to do that. Then you have the 
option to draw cards as well. You do not have to do it, but if you decide to, you must go all the way back up to the number of cards in your hand. Now this is important because if at any point you need to draw and your draw pile is empty, you must do a shuffle. And if I had to shuffle, what's going to happen is first the moon track is going to go up by one. You're going to draw an event card just as we did during the normal course, and then we're going to shuffle and draw, continue drawing up to our hand. So as you can see, discarding and drawing can be quite harmful to the players at the table. These objective tokens that we get have one of two purposes. On a player's turn, they can use them just the same as witch cards. They can spend them to overcome events. On any other player's turn, you can collectively use two of them to reduce the cost by one of any recruit the player is looking to purchase. If at any point during the game, these stacks underneath a particular card become empty, then that objective is complete and you will resolve the text on the card, such as here will resurrect Benjamin Franklin. One player may freely reshuffle their coven discards, then draw to a full hand. So you can see from earlier that could be very useful if a player was maybe down to say one card left in their draw pile. That will be flipped over and that objective is now complete. A couple other things to keep in mind in the game is you'll see these bell and gun icons here. If a card ever shifts into a spot with a bell that has a bell on it, it's going to move the Liberty track towards tyranny, which is one way the players can lose. If a card with a gun ever slides into one with a gun, then one of the recruits here must be banished to the recruit banishment. A couple other things to note is that the cards themselves, the witch cards, have special abilities that they can be played on a player's turn or potentially out of turn, it depends on the card, to the discard pile to take a special action. So if at the end of my turn I decided I wanted to act again, so try another event, I could use one of my seekers and that would now give me to play to get another act on my turn. Some of the others here, such as this Celebrant, when you act with a Celebrant, another player may cont contribute two icons from an assist card. In addition, there will also be relics in here, which do not have a cost. They're always free to take, and they can be spent just like witch cards. However, when they are spent, they are always banished and not do not go to your discard pile. The game continues until one of four things happen. Either the Tyranny track reaches all the way here to the game log, spot, in which case the players have lost. Or, if an event card ever fills up to the designated spot for the number of players. In a four-player game, a three-player game, a two-player game, and a solo game, you go past it. Or, if the players draw the last event card and they are unable to fulfill their objectives during that turn, the game is also lost. If at any point players have completed all four objectives, then they have won the game. So that's a look at Witches of the Revolution. Now, being a deck building game, typically I'm not drawn to them, but the theme really pulled me into this game. The artwork on the box seemed interesting and the theme seemed like something I hadn't seen before, so I was excited to get this one to the table. However, that is where things get a little interesting because what I found in this game is a deck builder that I actually really enjoy as far as the mechanisms go. However, the theme for me, which what drew me into this game to begin with, kind of fell apart. And that's a little sad, but does not detract away from my enjoyment in playing the game. The artwork in the game is wonderful, and again, it's something that drew me in but I wish there was more of it here. Unfortunately, the coven cards, the witch cards, there's not a lot of variety to. Each player has their own for starting their own starting deck and they have one particular card artwork for that. And then there's maybe four or five different types of artwork on the various cards that you can purchase. And that just gets a little samey after a while, but Honestly, because the theme isn't as much as I thought it would be here, you actually don't notice it. So let's talk about the theme for a second before I turn back to the mechanisms. Because I keep harping on this why the themes seem to have fall apart for me, and that's simply because I just didn't feel it in this game. This had this great idea of these witches helping in the American Revolution, and that seems exciting and seems fresh and new, 
despite being old, but it just doesn't shine through. The mechanisms don't seem to support it. The artwork is sparse, but what I think really this game needed was more flavor text. It's all well and good to have an event of the British landing on some coast, but give me some history. It seems like just a little bit of history on the cards would have really engaged me more into the theme. What I end up feeling like theme-wise is that I feel like for lack of a better term, it almost feels like cube pushing. And that's not the exact word that I'm looking for here, but it it's what it feels like to me. It feels like we look at a card, we need three yellow of this, and we have it, good, we move on. And there's no thematic reasoning to why we were overcoming these events, other than we didn't want them to be pushed out on the board and make things harder for us. And that was a bit of a letdown. Again, though, I still enjoyed the game for its mechanisms. The thing that I really enjoyed here is I enjoyed how in a lot of deck builders you want to call your deck. You want to get a small deck that you can rapidly come through. Whereas in this game you want a big deck and you're not going to get it. You really have to make some tough decisions in this game. Uh, when you go to purchase a card to recruit a new witch you know that you're giving something up and that can be a little painful. Now it is nice that the recruit goes to the top of the deck and that helps but you know every time you cycle through your deck you're making it harder for everyone at the table. I enjoyed the cooperative nature of the game and one thing I will say is the first time I played it I played the solo game and I almost wasn't sure I liked it because it misses that cooperative aspect of everyone helping each other out so I definitely don't recommend this game as is solo. Overall, what I found in the box was a wonderful cooperative deck builder that plays differently than you would expect a deck builder to do. And the tension really ratchets up as the game progresses, as your decks get smaller, as the moon tracker goes up, and even that liberty track starts to go down. Everything feels like you're having to make the hardest decision every turn as to what to do. And that really works here for the theme Unfortunately, it would have worked for almost any other theme too, so I'm a little sad about that. One other note about the artwork in the game, and this is more of a technical critique of the game, is the event cards are small cards, and I found it difficult to see the icons on them, and since some of the coloring is very close to itself, I found a hard time noticing that what I was actually looking for. And again, I didn't notice this the first time I played it solo, but when I played it with other people and I was further away from those event cards, I really started to notice how much just full-size event cards would have helped this game out, both in terms of visibility, plus you would have gotten a little extra space for the flavor text that would have drawn the theme in. Overall, I do recommend the game. I really do enjoy it. I wish there was more. I'm hoping maybe an expansion might make the theme shine a little more. I hope this has given you an idea of how the game plays and whether or not it might be a good game for you and your game group, or even if you consider the game solo. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.